going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be dealing with something quite strange that you may wonder why does it sound that way? And what we're gonna be dealing with today is this guy. I don't know what you call that. Um, yeah, let's see if we can fix that because that sound should not be coming out of this car. So the solution for this problem, we're gonna go ahead and give the Wolo bad boy, and this is the model 419. We're gonna go ahead and give this a try and see if we can't get this thing to install. Now, I did look on Science of Speed in a previous video where we saw a horn option which was running about 160 bucks. This guy right here, you can pick up for under 40 bucks. I'm gonna make sure to leave a link in the description, but let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see uh, what we got inside. All right, so we have a relay here. We may probably not need this for this particular application. We've got the instruction manual and we have a nice little bad boy on board sticker. If you wanna really uh, make sure that there's a bad boy on board. We've got uh, a bolt here from looking at it, this bolt's gonna be probably too big. And then we have the actual Wolo Model 419 horn. So this is the spot here where this will mount to the uh, vehicle. And underneath it tells you you've got plus and minus so you should be able to uh, uh, make this a nice, quick, easy install. So let's go ahead and see what else we need in order to make this thing work. Okay, so in order to make this work, I had to go uh, to Lowe's and grab, I don't even know if this has a, oh, there it is, okay. These are square nuts, and this is a 1 4th by 20. So I had to grab one of those, a pack of those. We're gonna use two of these. And there's also a bolt, the size, it was just a freehand bolt. He told me that they can look up the price based off of this. This is an H-A-F-Y-C. So I'm not exactly sure the thread size. Uh, let me think about this. Yeah, we'll have to figure out exactly what that is so that at least you'll know what the size is. But we're gonna use these to get it installed. And we're first gonna start by taking off the stock horn. So let's go ahead and show you where that is. Here's a stock horn right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this bolt right here and unclip the horn to uh, start the process. Now when you're taking this bolt off, be careful, it can drop. And if it falls, good luck trying to find it. So, Go ahead, we got that bolt off, got the horn off. Here's the ground wire. Unplug the harness from the horn. Here's your stock horn. Just gonna put that bolt on there for safe keeps. Stock horn, um, yeah. The reason why this sounds so bad is because this car only has one horn. So that's one tone, that's why it sounds the way it does, which is not very good. So, let's see what we need to do in order to get this setup working. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and readjust here to a little station down here. So these are some of the tools I'm gonna be using in order to get this done. So, Harbor Freight got these little shrink, uh, shrink wraps heat shrink wraps, whatever they're called. Get the one that fits best. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. This is what I'll be using uh, with these guys, which I'm gonna shrink that over the wire once it's ready to go. So with that, then we're gonna need a little bit of uh, wiring here. So let me go ahead and get a little bit of wire cut here. I'm gonna tap into the original wire so that we can preserve the stock setup. So, I don't know, maybe this is about, don't have a measuring tape here, but I don't know, you probably need about six to eight inches worth of wire. 
not too much. One end we can leave as is because these will use these uh, these wire taps to make that happen. These right here. The other end we do need to strip because those are going to go into the uh, connector piece. So we'll go ahead strip that down. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna push these guys in here and we're gonna crimp them on. So I'm gonna just give it one bend, slide it up, make sure it's sitting pretty right in there. Go ahead and grab your termination tool and then crimp down on that spot where you bent, should be nice and snug. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. Slide that up. You can see right there where it's sitting, right at the tip there. We'll go ahead and press that in. Okay, so that's looking good. So next up, what we're gonna do, we're gonna slide these on to I'm gonna slide this over, get that flush here. We're gonna heat that up so that it gives it a nice, nice little protection. Slide that there, and then we're just gonna heat these up. And the next piece is to hopefully get these um, tapped onto the uh, stock wires. So let's go ahead and get the uh, heat gun set up and then we'll get these going. All right, so we got our heat gun. So let's just start with the first one. So I'm just gonna put this on high heat, shrink them down. Okay, I gave it a little twist there just to uh, get rid of the slack, but the rest took nicely. You can also add a little bit of tape to that if you want a little extra, extra seal. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the other one. Okay, same thing again here. Just gonna give it a little twist. It is hot, so be careful. So boom, there that goes. So what I'm gonna do just to give it a little extra seal, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put a little bit of electrical tape from this spot, give it a nice little diagonal and roll it on down. Okay, it's looking good. And the same on this side. Just gonna roll that on down, break it, finish it off. Nice tight seal. So you can see here we got a nice snug fit here on both of these, both the reds and the black. So next step, we gotta get these tapped into the uh, stock setup, and then we're gonna tape off the uh, OEM connectors. Okay, so first we're gonna take the black wire, that one sits in the back of the splice, and then we wanna slide this one into the front side. So we don't need a ton of extra wire, but, um, just to be safe, you want to have a decent amount of wire, so you get that set in place, and then you just go ahead and press down right here, and that should 
get the wires to splice. So in the future, if you do want to return to stock, you absolutely have the option to do so. So before we tape this off, we're gonna go ahead and test it to make sure we did make a connection. So same thing here on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here on the positive side, but we're gonna go a little lower. We're gonna come down here after this spot. So let's go ahead and get that set in place and then we will splice that right down there on that side. Okay, once everything is in place, go ahead and we'll punch down the splicing connector. Okay, so what I wanna do before we tape this up is we're gonna go ahead and test out to see if we have power. So we'll put the plus on the plus side and we'll put the minus on the minus side. Let's see what we get. Okay, we are in business. So we do have power going to the leads. Fantastic. All right, so now all we need to do is tape these babies up and we should be ready to see if we can get this to slide into a good location, secure it in place, and then we'll be done with the installation. Let's go ahead and we're just gonna get this all covered up here. Nice and neat. Nice and neat and tight. Okay, so everything's wrapped up nice and neat here. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the positive side. This time I think we're gonna start, let's go ahead and start up here. Since we got this big connector. You know, I would say the easiest thing to do is probably to just release this connector yeah let's see if we can't get this connector released we'll store it somewhere so that we don't have to worry about this big giant connection being in the way okay so i tried to maybe hit one of these little pins in here to see if it'll release i cannot get it to release but this thing is pretty big and i don't want it to get in the way and since it is the positive side i just feel like it's gonna get too much exposure to water so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut this this uh heat shrink they have here see if we can't create a connector for it instead of leaving it the way it is Okay, so this, this is what's underneath. So this is how they did it at the factory. So what we need to do is if, see if we can't get these wires to release out of this uh, crimper, if possible, and re-terminate them. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good, good hold on this thing.
well yeah this is this is some pretty good stuff I'm really not getting any any slack on this thing so what I'm gonna do then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off right here and we'll cut this off right here spare as much wire as possible and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strip this and terminate it with a, uh, a different connector so that we can save that in case it's needed in the future. So let me go ahead and grab some connectors for these and we'll get these uh, re-terminated. Okay, so here we have these connectors. So I'm gonna use this on one side. I'm gonna use this guy on the other side and we're gonna get these, and get these terminated. And then that way uh, in the future, if the stock setup has to, the stock horn needs to be reused, all we have to do is plug and play. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this crimped on. Same for this one. And then what we'll do is we'll store this connector for future use. And then also here's the uh, heat shrinks. You can pick this up at Harbor Freight. Plenty of uh, assortments of sizes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a heat shrink to uh, this guy as well. So we got that slid on, put on the heat. So we're going to store this guy for future use. We'll just, uh, we can just basically connect this up to the stock horn and save that. And then for this little guy here, if we want, we can also add a little heat shrink on him. Go ahead and just slide this guy on here. It looks like we got stuck. Let's try this again. Okay, that's a little bit of a challenge. So looks like we're just gonna have to slide the entire thing over 
like so. And probably just have to cut around it to get rid of the excess. Okay, and then we'll just shrink that up. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and uh, finish off with the tape and we'll go ahead and get the horn locked and loaded into a good location. Okay. So now that all of that is in place, let's go ahead. We'll hook up our positive to the positive end. We'll hook up our negative to the negative side. Everything's nice and snug. And then let's see if we can't fit this guy down in here. So I'm gonna start first. So I have a nice little bit of slack here. I'm gonna start first by just kinda coming over to this side and then seeing if we can't get it to slide, slide down. It's a very, very little room to work with here. So hopefully this, this can work. Let's see if we can't get this thing to fit in here. Okay. All right, so once, once we cleared this plastic piece, we should be able to, there we go, okay. Should be able to slide this there, okay. I think we got it. All right, so once you get it, it's kind of gonna sit at an angle. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bolt and the square nut, put that on top. We're gonna slide that behind here and then we're gonna push that through the hole. Okay. Now once that's in there, could be a little shorter, but we'll work with it. And go ahead and we can get that square nut, get that set in place, screw that on, and then the rest is just making sure it's tight in place. All right, so that square nut is a 12. So we go ahead, we just tighten that in place. Sitting good, not rubbing on anything. It kind of sits in an angle, nice and snug. And there you have it. Everything's connected, feeling good. Let's give it a run. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this bad boy installation will help somebody out who is looking to get a uh, aftermarket option in their vehicle without spending an arm and a leg. As you can see, it, it fits snug right in place. You close the hood, it's got plenty of clearance. Doesn't hit anything, looking good, sounding good.
So there you have it. All right, so one more thing to note. After just checking the instructions real quick here, you can see this is running on a 20 amp fuse. So what I would suggest, hop into the fuse box. And you flip this around in the direction here. Front's going this way. When you look at the fuse, you can see here that we are looking for number 26, which is the horn, which is running a 10. So what I would suggest is go ahead, one, two, three, four. A 10 was here, go ahead, pull that. Upgrade that to a 20 so that uh, the chances of you blowing the fuse are less likely. So I hope this video was helpful to somebody. Now you see what's involved in getting this horn replaced. A few tools here and there, pieces of wire, some heat shrink. Uh, it, it's actually not very difficult and it really changes the sound, gives it a much uh, more high, high class premium sound for the horn. So yeah, that's it, it's done. This is your boy BT, we got the horn upgrade and I'll catch you guys on the next one.